Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing how to get the most out of every sparring session you have at your martial arts school. Now, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the thumbs up button, and hit the little bell so that you can get notified anytime I make a new video. If you are new to the channel, you perhaps haven't heard of our online self-defense training program. If you go to Kempo360.com, you can sign up for our 22 lesson, uh, several month long self-defense course that teaches you all of the fundamentals of stand, clinch, and ground self-defense. Once again, that's Kempo360.com. All right, so let's get into the meat of this. When you are sparring, how do I get the most out of it? For starters, let's go ahead and make one thing really clear. Sparring is not the same as fighting. If you think that you can beat someone at sparring or if you're winning at sparring, you're misunderstanding sparring entirely. And that very mindset of sparring being something you can win or lose will make you have an unproductive sparring session. Why? Because sparring's whole purpose, the whole reason why we do it, is so that we can make all the mistakes in class that we don't want to make in the actual self-defense situation or in competition. This is where you find out what works and what doesn't work. And if you are in the mindset of every sparring session being this competition between you and your sparring partner, you probably are gonna be awfully hesitant to try a new technique or try a new method out that could get you hit or get uh, your opponent score a point on you. Hicks and Gracie, one of the great mixed martial arts fighters of the past generation, once said that if I beat a man, it is because I made more mistakes than he did. And if he beats me, it's because he made more mistakes than I. He's not referencing mistakes in the fight that they just had. He's saying that in a lifetime of training, he made more mistakes, therefore learned more lessons, plugged more holes, and cleaned up his game more than the other guy. And that's exactly what sparring is meant to do. It's supposed to be a place where you get to experiment and most importantly, where you get to fail in a safe environment, where you can find out what works and what doesn't work. And that those two things are very unique to every individual. I have very short arms for my height. And so as a result, I am never a long distance puncher. I can't do it. But the only way I can find that out, that I can find that limitation is by trying it and failing miserably for several years and realizing like, oh, that strategy doesn't work well for me. So I tend to, at the long range, use a lot of kicks, and then I get in close and use a lot of grappling. And that fits best for my body type. And that's something that I learned through trial and error, and that trial and error can be done safely in sparring. So anytime you enter into a sparring match or into a sparring session with one of your friends, Try to focus on achieving a goal. Walk in there with a goal in mind and be hellbent on getting it. It could be a big concept, like I'm going to fight from the outside or I'm going to fight as close to them as I can. Or it could be a very, very narrow thing. I'm going to specifically try to get one kind of move. Like perhaps your teacher has recently taught you a new setup for the sidekick. Spend that entire sparring session trying to set up that sidekick that your teacher taught you. This is especially true for people who come from the Kempo background like me. A lot of Kempo practitioners make this divide between the self-defense techniques and the sparring techniques of Kenpo. But the truth is the self-defense techniques of Kenpo can be used in sparring and vice versa. But if you don't experiment with it, you don't know. I've met a lot of Kenpo guys, or at least heard plenty of Kenpo guys online saying that like, oh, well, you don't really use self-defense techniques in sparring. Well, you don't if you don't try it. There are a lot of Kenpo techniques that aren't good for sparring, but there's a tremendous amount of Kenpo techniques that work great in sparring. But if you aren't trying it, you don't know. That hesitation to try new things in sparring is fully understandable. You are being hit by your opponent. You have, you have this constant threat ahead of you and you really wanna to stick to just the things that work. But it's important to remember that sparring is a place to make mistakes. It's not a place to win. Once I understand how to win the fight, I take that 
to a fight. I go and I go to a martial arts tournament or I get into kickboxing or I get into MMA and I can use that there. But when you are learning martial arts, when you're learning self-defense, it's really important that you experiment as much as possible while sparring so that you can figure out what works best for you. Everybody is unique. Those techniques that work great for Jim won't necessarily work great for Steve. They're different. And the only way for them to figure out what works best for them is for them to experiment. I also re recommend focus sparring, doing things where you have a very specific goal. For example, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they do positional roles where they set up a scenario. I'm going to hold guard. You have to pass my guard. If you pass my guard or I submit you, we reset. That's a phenomenal way to train so that you're hyper focusing on just one skill and repeating it over and over and over and over again because many people uh, learn to avoid the situations they're bad at as opposed to getting good at it and I will say guard passing is something that I generally don't feel super good at being somebody who has a lot of training in stand fighting, I'd much rather just stand up and kick the guy. But to be good at jujitsu, I need to understand how to pass guard. So being forced to hyper focus on it by my coaches is very smart on their end. Okay, but, but when do I just try to beat the guy? When do I focus on just honing the skills that I'm good at? And that's where the three levels come into play. If you think about belts in martial arts, I think they're a really good way to kind of figure out where our focus should be in self-defense. And this is gonna throw some people under the bus, so I apologize in advance. If you are sparring someone who is at your level, that is a great opportunity to just spar and see what happens. If you are sparring someone who is a higher level than you, then that's a great opportunity to develop your defensive abilities. And if you are sparring someone who is of a lower level than you, sorry about this for the new guys, <laughs> that's when you work on new offensive abilities. So let's say you just learned a new kick. Well, you're probably not gonna get it on the black belt, but on that new guy, you might be a good opportunity to try to learn that new kick. Of course, assuming you're doing it respectfully, not hurting people. If you feel like you have been training in martial arts for a long time, but you've recently plateaued, try changing up your sparring strategy to fit this method. And I assure you, you will see your skills start to skyrocket again. It is not the easy path, but I think no one in the martial arts who has any kind of skill ever takes the easy path. As Musashi once said, it is very difficult, but all things are difficult at first. There are plenty of people who will comment on my videos having not watched the whole video. So to prove to me that you made it to the end, include the word punch somewhere in your comment in the comment section down below. And of course, if you've made it to the end of the video, uh, you're clearly being entertained. Why are you not subscribed? Click that subscribe button, click the bell button so that you get notified anytime I make a new video. And one last time, a reminder, if you're looking to train with me at a distance, you can do that now through our website, Kempo360.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense, fight on.